like to talk more about uh, lens space, especially using a, a very special uh, way, which is activation function visualization. Okay, um, this article is provided by some, uh, you know, some researchers. However, this is written in uh, Chinese, so I will explain it. So here is uh, some example. I like to uh, to do some demonstration. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, when we talk about uh, activation function, actually it has, it, it plays a very important role when we design your network. Okay, uh, they are not just uh, um, uh, describe the nonlinear relationship between input data and the output target. So uh, of course there are several different uh, activation function. Okay, you can see that there are some function uh, right here. We will pass through the the result. To, active, to the activation function before you output the value to the next layer, right? Uh, there's several different um, activation right here, and most of them they are what we call they are smooth functions. 好，中文就称之为它是一个平滑的曲线。好，它平滑曲线。那平滑的原因是因为它要在任意的点上都可以做微分。好，所以你可以知道它的设计基本基本上是这样子。好。The reason why we, we wish the, the activation function is smooth that is because it can be differentiated at any point. Okay, so that after we apply those function, those uh, uh, those activation function can be uh, can can do partial differentiation. Okay, so that is the reason why they are smooth functions. Okay, uh, after we do uh, if we apply partial differentiation on those 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 activation function, we can see that. Um, this is the grade gradient at each point after we apply different activation function. 好，中文的意思就是说，呃，如果我们把刚刚那些数字啊，比如说 x 加 b 啊，啊，把它 apply 到呃 activation function 之后啊，那我们我们不是要对那个 x 做偏微分嘛？那偏微分的时候，那个 gradient 就会长像这个样子。好，就是这是导数了哈。我们以中文的讲，这是导数了哈。And as we can see that, uh, this one. Is is sigmoid this one? Because the sigmoid function, uh, it is right here, right? It's right here. Uh, the the gradient does not change very dramatically. 好，中文的翻译是说，你看那个 sigmoid 这个 function， 因为它的那个范围啊是正一到零之间嘛，然后它很平缓，对不对？所以它的微分呢、啊，就是它的切线方向啊，它的值啊也蛮缓的。它的它的切分啊、呃，对不起，它的微分最剧烈的值，呃，是在那个输入值是零的时候嘛，那个那个地方斜率最大嘛。好，可是那斜率是多少？那斜率才零点二多而已。好，就是下面这张图上就写，好，在这里哈。So you can see that the 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 gradient of the schemoid function, the value is quite low. That means when you do partial differentiation, we we'll like to minimize the value, right? And there are some weight, okay, after we do partial differentiation, okay? So if the, the, the value is quite small, which means uh, the, the gradient, okay, it's very small. 好，中文的意思是说，当我们在做偏微分的时候啊，那我们不是会微分好，最早它最小值的那个 loss function 嘛？在偏微分的过程当中，因为那个值是乘上去的嘛，也就是说它会乘上一些比较小的值，因为它是微分过的嘛，我们要去明白这个值嘛，所以会导致说我们在 passing 这个值过去的时候，常常会遇到一个问题，就是这个问题叫做中文翻译成梯度消失的问题哈。那梯度消失的问题就是说呢，你在因为通常牛顿内位有很多层嘛，对不对？那每一层都都会有一个微分嘛，然后就一直乘一乘，那它会越乘越小，越乘越小，越乘越小。那也就是说呢 ，information 呢一直往后。递延，然后递延，递延的时候，其实最后的 information 就不见了。So, uh, that is, so we can see that the 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 slope of the sigmoid, 就是 sigmoid 的斜率啊 ，is very small. The largest one is, uh, that is zero point five, zero point five. Okay. So when you do partial differentiation, when you do uh back propagation, okay, the 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 times a lot of different weights, right? And their 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 partial differentiation partial differentiation values. So the information passed from the left hand side to the right hand side. If you have many 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 layers, and many layers they have, uh, for each layer they have um uh, activation function, and then you use sigmoid function. It in 
usually encounter a problem which is called gradient gradient vanish problem, which means the information will be lost in such kind of deep neural network because we have different uh, memory many layers and each layer will have a very small gradient to pass the information from left hand side to the right hand side. Sometimes we we we, we use a uh, uh, another version of a uh, function is called hyperbolic tangent because hyperbolic tangent its gradient is from 0 to 1 okay so let's take a look at uh, some other activation function which is not that smooth okay so that is ReLU right ReLU looks like this it has a turning point and a very sharp turning point so it is not differ differentiable at the uh, original point. Uh, 就是ReLU这一类型的 activation function它们都有一个转折点那这个转折点就会导致它是不可导的嘛这个高中大家都学过嘛可是因为它不可导的点只有那个点而已所以实际上我们在做这个微分的时候我们还是可以特别的针对那个点去讨论说在那个点上的微
you squeeze the data. Okay, so there are different types of ways to squeeze data. Sigmoid, okay, uh, they, they squeeze the data. Uh, they 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 will ignore the data at uh, which is uh, very large. They squeeze those data point at the, uh, which is far away from the original point. They squeeze it to. And we can see that sigmoid is right here, right? It's right here. If your data is very, very far away somewhere here, it will be squeezed to somewhere very close to zero. If your data is very, very small, far away from original data point, the data will be squeezed to zero. So basically, if we Pay attention to this one. Right? For P or for some data points it's right here. F right? It is a little bit far away from the original data point. Right? So it will squeeze back to one. Right? So if there is a data point right here, F2, right? It is minus. It is in the, the both both of the x1 s s2 value. They are minus value. They are uh, negative value, and they are very far away from zero, right? They will squeeze back to zero. Originally, F2 is uh, very far away from zero point, and they are uh, negative numbers, right? But after pass through. Uh, sigmoid function, they will both squeeze to zero zero. They are somehow tell us how do we squeeze the original data distribution from the original space. Okay, of course there are only two dimension. You, you can use a, a very high dimension data, and then squeeze the data into a a, a spe specific area, right? And as we can see, uh, for 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 example, for the hyperbolic tangent. Right, we'll have other tangent. Okay, data which is far away from the original data point will be squeezed to here, but data which is very close to original data point will stay in the original place. Right, that is because it's as we mentioned before. Okay, that that is because the gradient of hyperbolic tangent has such kind of property so that is so we have different so please take some time to take a look at these figures okay if you don't do any activation function your input and output will be the same if you do sigmoid function the data at the negative side will be squeezed to the zero point right for tangent activation function the data which is very close to zero will maintain its value and on the other way, if your input value is very far away from the zero, far away from the original point, it will be squeezed to uh, somewhere. Okay, for ReLU, negative value will be ignored, and positive value will be, will be mapped to some um, some 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 place. Usually, when we, when we uh, formulate a neural network, that could be something like an activation function plus w x uh, plus b. It is the first layer, right? Again, we use this as the input and pass it through to the second layer. So maybe we should use one right here. Right? We pass it through to a second layer and we have the second layer. And we pass it to the second activation function. And then the result is Y. Sometimes we can use a very simple um, mathematic uh, representation to represent for example that is a two layer neural network the activation function we used right here they try to squeeze the data the input data and put it in a, a trend we say map or we say transform the data to a new learning space and then um, the weights right here and the the b right here okay those parameters that help us to rotate the data or do some linear transformation 
as we can, uh, we, 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 I think we have talked talk about this uh, concept before. Okay, if you have a data which is original, this one, it's right here, and then you apply a polynomial transformation. Ah, 就是你做一个呃呃那个多项式的运算的时候 ，actually it maps to a、uh, rotation. 就是说你，你你做这个多项式的运算的时候，实际上你你就把它想成嘛，因为我们以前高中都有教过嘛，我们可以把它想成说，它是一个对一个呃向量的角度西塔的向逆时针旋转那个西塔的角度嘛。好、哦，我们高中应该都学过嘛。逆时针旋转西塔角的时候，就乘以 sin cos 跟 cos 负 sin 的那个 x x 值跟 x s one 值跟 x two 的值嘛。所以你可以把它想成说 ，polynomial 的计算实际上就是一种数据的 remapping。就是它从原空间把它 map 到另外的空间，那大部分的想法应该就是一样是拉伸、旋转，然后跟平移啊，因为我们还有 b 嘛 ，b 是平移嘛，好，大家记得啊，就是好。所以实际上 neural network 如果你不要以 neural network 的形式讲说它在 pass information 从左边到右边的话，你可以把它想成说这些公式里面的那个 w 啊，实际上是在原资料做旋转跟平移。然后那个打 A 的功能啊，那根据我们刚刚上面看的那个例子嘛，它在做资料的拉伸，还有最重要的是折叠，好，因为你把东西变成负，正变成负的，它就翻过来嘛，那就有点像折纸一样变成折叠了啊。所以实际上我们的 neural network， 虽然我们一般都是画右边这个图嘛，对不对 ？Pass information 从 x y， 然后到 h 一，然后到 y prime x prime， 然后到 p one p two 做 soft max。它好像是一个纯数学的运算，运算把资料从左移到右边，然后再乘上一个 weight， 然后 weight 再做外面再做 activation 方式做一个非线性的关系的转换，听起来好像很玄玄幻，但实际上以数学纯数学的空间角度的例子来说的话，它实际上就是在描述原资料怎么样经过一连串的旋转、缩放、拉、推、折叠、平移。这些东西，然后使至于原空间可以被折叠成另外一个样子。那个样子我们等一下会看。好，我要在英文再讲一遍哈。好 ，So basically, when we talk about neural network, we usually use the this figure, right? This figure. Uh, how do we uh pass the information from left hand side? Pass through different neurons, and neurons will have different weights to receive the information from left hand side, and pass it to the activation function to do something a nonlinear relationship, nonlinear mapping to the right hand side, and so on and so forth. We have different layers to do such kind of to do such kind of things. But however, if you use a visualized way to to describe this data, okay, it can be described as the as this this way. And as we can see, those weights. Intercept and those、uh, activation function they can view as the original data in the original space, and after they pass through a layer, they will do such kind of、uh, rotation or、uh, scale to do such kind of shift. Okay, so the original space will be mapped to a new landing space, and new landing space will. Will have, of course, they have the original data is right here, but the the shape of the original data is a little bit different. And after they pass through different layers, so they have different type of rotations, uh, scale, uh, uh, shift, uh, rotation, whatever, or different kind of uh things. They will map to a new space. And we do use the last new space to help us to do. Prediction or to do classification. So,、um, take a look at the following figure. That I think that's very very important. Okay, we can see that.、Uh, for example, if we have a very simple、uh, neural network like this one, okay,、uh, x y and four hidden neurons and x y prime y, and we have a soft max. Okay, so if we apply ReLU right here, okay, so the step right here is how many Partial differentiation. How many data we like to tune this neural network? But visually, it means how we can squeeze, uh, rotate, change our landing space. So that is okay, for the first time. If we use our training data, right, we have a new weight, right, and we use this new weight to map the original data. 
to a new Y. So that is the if you only do such kind of uh, training one once, okay, the data will be like this. The original data is like this. It's it's, it's a circle. It's two circles, okay, with a red uh, data point and a, a purple data point. If you only train those data once, the weight you trend will be like this. And after you train 50 times, that means the, the shape is a little bit different, right? And our target is to differentiate uh, the red data point and the purple data points. So you can see that with different trainings, we have uh, better weights. Those better weights can max the, those function value to be lower, lower, lower for, the, for each time we train the, train the data. So after 400 times we train this data, as we can see that the, the original data the, the original data distribution will be gradually um, changed by the current neural network. Okay, so basically, because the idea is we like to dis, uh, the the Y right here. Okay, the Y right here we like to distinguish uh, uh, red points and the purple point. So your weight will help us to uh, transform the original data, so that we can easily partition red data and purple data. So there are several different rotations, folding, and something like that. So that after that, we can have a very nice new landing space. And this new landing space can perfectly use a simple line to, simple line, we call it boundary line, okay? This simple line to differentiate red point and purple point. New landing space, okay? Something like that. So this simple line can be described by a very, very simple line, right? This line could be A, something like that. So we, we can use the original data, and we after we have such kind of uh, rotations, such kind of shift, such kind of things, this line can easily differentiate these two data points, right? So what is this line means? This line means less softmax. Yeah, exactly this one. Of course, there are some weights right here. So after we have all the information to the last layer, hidden layer, and the output is X prime and Y prime, that means this two information has already been twisted, been rotated, been shipped to a new landing space. And this new landing space is X prime and Y prime. So that would be X prime and Y prime. And we can use a very simple line, which is represented by softmax. Softmax basically is just a very simple polynomial calculation. Okay, so we can use this line to differentiate blue point, uh, sorry, purple point and red point. Okay, uh, this is simple. They, they use ReLU to do such kind of demonstration. And if you do sigmoid, as we've seen before, sigmoid has different um, squeeze uh, shape, right? So basically that is the how sigmoid squeeze those data, data point. Activation function is the way you, you, you twist, you, you rotate, you, you, you push the, the data into different land space. You, you, can, you can see that we, we have a, a, a black line right here. Black line means it is a boundary line, okay? The different, the, it's called boundary line, which means uh, how do we partition two different data, okay? this boundary line and you map the boundary line back to the original space okay in the landing space that is landing space right in the landing space it is a straight line but when you map that map, map the line straight line back to the original space it would be a uh, uh, something like this it is not a straight line right because you have to a lot of folding rotation something like that Okay, so um, if you map it back, you can create a boundary line in the original space. Okay, the boundary line is not a line, it's basically a, a very strange shape. Okay, so the four right here means uh, how many hidden nodes. So uh, I write here, okay, uh, let's take this one. The soft plus four means we have four hidden nodes. So we have four edges right here. Of course, the, the, the sigmoid function right here, they has four edges as well. However, in this, okay, I, I say that 
actually it has four edges but the, the, the figure is not good enough for you to to observe that four edges actually uh, actually they are they, they, they are four edges but two of the edges are very very close to each other so it looks like uh, three edges but actually there's four okay uh, if you have only one layer of the neural network so that basically it means you rotate it once you you scratch it once you squeeze it once by your activation function and your output right if you have two layers you have two opportunity to squeeze your data so if you have more 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 layers you have more and more time to squeeze your data to transform your data so here is the uh, notes i write for you okay so basically um you if you design a neural network it is similar to uh folding a paper that means you you you, you change your data you, you squeeze your data okay the activation function you used in your neural network is the different way to fold your data to push your data to a, to the from the original space to a new land space okay and the number of hidden nodes you use in a in each layer that means how many times of folding in each round right if you have more and more hidden nodes in each layer that means you can have more folding okay so the next one is the number of hidden layers is how many runs of folding so basically uh, if you visualize the thing that is just a way to fold a paper and there are some data points in the, in the paper and when you fold the paper you, you simply just want to differentiate for example the, the red uh, red data points and the purple data point your boundary will, will be more smooth because you fold many times right if you have more neurons, that means for each run, you can fold more, more and more times. Okay, try, try to think about it. Try to, uh, to uh, comprehend uh, the, math, the mathematic form. Okay, so that it, A2, W2, A1, W1, X, that is a mathematical form of your neural network. And the right hand side is the network form of your network. Okay, and uh, think about if you visualize your data by using the mathematic form, it is simply just how do you map your da original data to a new landing space. And in a new landing space, you can easily do classification, for example. So we make the boundary line in the landing space and we map it back to the original space, which creates a very nice, smooth boundary line in the original space. So. Neural network is not that magic. We don't just simply say, okay, I have a very strange weight. And the weight uh, will pass through the information from the left hand side to the right hand side with a magic weight. And the magic weight, something like, okay, um, 0 0.3 times your weight plus 0 0.7 point, uh, times your uh, height plus uh, 0 0.5 uh, your uh, your your hand, your hands, your length of your hands equals to your, uh, for example, your your length of your leg. Some sometimes we we, we may we may we may argue that what 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 is the weight stands for? Why it it is so strange? What is zero point three times your weight? What is the semantic and semantic definition of zero point three times your weight? But actually, it, it, it does not mean the weight. It means somehow you twist, twist your data from your original space in the new space. And in the new space, you can clearly, you can easily do such kind of partition. So you map your boundary line back to the original space. And those weights are how you map your data from the left hand side to the right hand side, to your original space, to the Land space uh, to a land space. So basically, you, you you don't need to you, you don't really need to to explain what it what means zero point three times your weight or what is zero seven times your legs. They're just a, a way, an optimized way. What kind of optimization uh, to optimize your loss function? Under optimize your loss function, how did you twist? How did you rotate? How did you push pull? fold your data from 
original space to new land space. And in new land space, you can easily use a line to partition your data. So you don't have to explain why, what is 0 0.3. It is just a way to twist, to twist your data to where you have a very low loss function value. Okay, try to uh, think about it. Okay, and uh, I think there's a very important concept to 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 explain neural network rather than just simply use a, a, a figure. Okay, like the right hand side figure to say okay we just simply pass the information from left hand side to the right hand side with the weight, but actually weight is very meaningful if you visualize uh, them. Okay.